Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm Einat Hazan, I'm a PM on the Customer Insights team. It's one of the newest additions to the Dynamics 365 family. And you heard James talk today about how we build um, everything in Dynamics and Azure on top of each other. And that's, that was perfect because that's really our story. So um, we're going to talk today about what Customer Insights is. I'm going to show you a demo of what the features we have built and talk a little bit about what's coming next. So uh, before I start, uh, you can find us later. We have, a, we have a stand there so you can find and, and ask more questions and listen more. I have my team here with me. Um, so uh, feel free to uh, stop by and find us. So what are we doing? The James talked about how we need to take all the data. Data is coming from everywhere, right? The customers, people, products, processes, service. Um, and today, in, in today's world, most of the organizations keep their data kind of siloed. So they use different systems for ERP, for CRM, for how they run the business, for where they store the data. What Customer Insights provides is the ability to bring together all of that data into one place, create a unified profile, a 360-degree view of the customer, and then apply it and use it outside. So like James said, we are not disconnected. We are not a standalone tool. We are just one step in the process. And I'll show you how we are connected to the rest of the tools and the applications in Dynamics World. So how do we do it? First, I talked about that. We take the data. We bring it in. How do we bring it in? We have all these built uh, pre-built connectors. If you are familiar with how Power BI is bringing the data in, we're doing the same thing. We're using the Power BI connectors to bring in data from anywhere you have that data. We're built on top of Azure. The, first, the second step is how we unify the data. So we have some pretty cool algorithms to take users and define rules and bring them together into one profile. And I'll show you how it's done later. And then having the data is not enough. Now, what do you do with the data? What do you do with this uh, profile? Uh, we, s we let you build on top of the data measures and insights, anything that you need to first uh, find the users that you need, when you need them, where you need them. Second, run your business processes. So if you take the data in aggregated level, it's not just about the customer. It's also about your business. And then we also enrich. So we are using the, the, the Bing audience intelligence as an extension to our data to add more insights in addition to what you're bringing from your organization. So things like uh, their affinity towards different categories or brands, uh, and I'll show you how it looks like. AI and ML is obviously the next big thing. Uh, we have some built-in capabilities. We are going, you, you heard today about AI Builder. We are going to do some integration with them in the next few months. They just announced today. We'll talk more about that as well. And then take action. We are not disconnected. We have connectors to every single place that you need in Dynamics and outside. So we've built connectors into Power BI, Flow, Power Apps, uh, and any Dynamics uh, 365 application. Just a small taste of our, of our architecture. Um, the main thing I want to call out here is everything that we have in our system, you can access externally through our uh, API layer. So if you don't like our, our app, that's fine. Go build your own app in Power Apps. Uh, build your own app and call our APIs directly and get the data. You have access to all of our data and all of our services through APIs. So we are built on top of Azure. You bring in the data. We have our own data lake. We are also bringing, bringing the capability to bring your own data lake instead of ingesting the data back to us. Uh, we have our processing layer that does all the map match merge, uh, build the measures, build the segments, um, and uh, uh, integrate with Azure. And then we have the API layer, as I said, you can call it directly if you want. And we are connected to all of these apps above. So because we have only 20 minutes, I want to switch gears and move and show you our tool. And I'll so this is Customer Insights. Um, and again, uh, we, uh, for this demo purpose, we took an imaginary customer, which is a hotel chain. Contoso Hotels, 
And what they're trying to do is bring together the data from their sales, Dynamics 365 for sales, and bringing also the reservation data and also hotel activities data. So if customers uh, went to the restaurant or purchased Wi-Fi or spa, and this, sometimes these are connected, right? So sometimes hotel uh, stays and the hotel services are connected, but sometimes a user can just, a customer can just go to the restaurant and pay with a credit card or not being, uh, or use these services even not just as a hotel guest. So we think of about this as three separate systems that live to in today's uh, in their organization today, and we want to bring them together. So the first step that we do is bring in the data. We have three data sources, as I said, from sales, from the services, and reservation. And from each of these data sources, we bring both the profile information of the users as well as their transactional data. Um, then we, the next step we have is the, to unify that. So we match the users so you can create your own rules to say what you want to match against. So you can match on email, you can match on names, you can match on credit cards. You define the rules. In the future, we are going to automate some of that and recommend some rules for you. Uh, and once we matched all the users across, then the last step in the unification process is to merge the profiles and to resolve conflicts across different data sources. So you get to decide where you bring the name from. Uh, if you think one of the data sources has more coverage or the data is more reliable, you'd pick, that, you'd, be, you'd pick that data source to be the first one. So you get to rank where the data is coming from in the merged unified profile. So the output of all of that is one entity called the customer entity that we base everything on top of that. And one thing I did forget to mention, we treat everything is in our system as entities. Entities that you can take outside, you can export them to anywhere you want. They are schematized, they, are CD, uh, they will be CDMified in the future, but they have the JSON.model um, schema in them and you can take them out. And since we treat everything as an entity, then you can do anything you do with any table or any entity uh, for, uh, for other processes. So now we have our customer entity. And as I said, one thing you can do is to enrich your data. So you can pick based on date, b birthday, ge gender, and zip codes. Pick two out of, the th out of the three. And tell us what brands you're looking for or what categories you're interested in. And we'll tell you if your customers have affinity towards these brands. So this data today is mostly useful in North America, but we are bringing more data sources in. Uh, and we are also going to enable in the future bringing your own kind of third party data into the system and enrich your, uh, your customers' data. The other thing that you want to do is to, to um, configure the activities because now not only you can see the unified profile, but you can see all of their actions across all of these data sources. If before in the sales app you could see maybe the purchases, in the hotel reservation tool you could see the, the, the stays, now we are bringing everything together and then you can see both marketing data, so how many emails they opened, engaged with, etc., together with the rest of the activities to get one view of what, who your user is and what they are doing. And I'll show you how it looks like. So now that we created uh, the unified profile, I can search for customers in Atlanta, let's say, and I'll pick one. And we have the unified profile of everything that we brought from the different data sources and all of their activities inside the hotel and their reservations, and if you have marketing data or any other type of data, this will come in here. This is preview, this is not complete yet. You can see that the enrichment is not there yet. But let's talk about some of the measures that we see here and how we do that. So again, having the data unified is not enough because what do you do, like everyone has data, what do you do with it? The first thing that we wanna do is measures. So we let you create both Customer attributes, which are just a single value measure like a churn score, total number of stays per customer, okay? And then also, um, and also customer measures that, uh, that have some dimensions. So not just a, a one value, but for example, how many nights they have per year. So per customer, we calculate that for you and you can see the preview right here. But it's not just about the customers, as I said, so you can also create some business measures. So this is just a number like, total customer, total number of customers, but you can think about total revenue or also add dimensions to that. So total aggregated, total, total number of stays 
per night, per year, or per month, whatever you need. So these are the measures. And then the next thing that we want to do is, uh, is build AI models, right? We have a lot of data. We can build our own measures. These are uh, uh, rule-based measures and segments that I'll show you later. But what do we, how do we do AI? So the first capability that is already available is to bring your own model, extend customer insights with Azure ML. We let you export all of your data into Azure ML and help your data scientist uh, get access to all of your data to build for you uh, machine learning models and then bring them back into customer insights to build more insights on top of them. Right, so AI is hard. AI, to build a good template for AI that will work for all businesses, uh, all businesses and all types of data, this is hard. So I know a lot of you might be working with either internal data scientists or partners. This is where we, we, we think partners are very valuable here because they can help cus their customers, their businesses, to, br to get the data and build AI models. So the first thing you do is to export the data and And as I said, like all of the data is, uh, sorry, let me click on that. All of the data is, is an entity. So you export it to Azure Blob as an entity. And that's not only your, the, the raw data that we brought, but also the measures that you created can also be exported in the same way. So now we help, this is just a setting of an Azure Blob. You get to select which entities you want. So one of the measures that I created is the count of services used by service per user. So we're helping our data scientists prepare the data for modeling. So they don't need to connect and join because we already know how to connect the, the customer with these activities. Uh, you can bring the raw data as well as aggregated data, kind of preparing the data, creating some uh, calculated attributes for the data scientist and helping them run the model. So now your data scientist like, ran the model and, and, and trained it and uh, did all that, and now they publish that into your tenant. So one of the things that I'm going to show you that is uh, coming in and, and the end of the month is a new intelligence tab that we have where you can actually uh, run and automate a workflow that runs that model that the data scientist published for you, export the data, and bring the output of the model back into CI as an entity, as data that you can use to do everything that you want to do. So for example, if I have the, the churn score model that we, we built for the hotel, um, so because the model was published in the same tenant, my service knows how to, uh, how to discover it. Okay, so we, we select whatever, we select the models that are within the tenant, and then because we discover it, we also know what the input looks like and what the output looks like because you published the model. So now uh, what we're asking you to do is just to map it to what the, the entities that you need as an input to the model and tell us how we map it back to our customer ID. So which field in the output of the model ma maps back to our customer. And that's all. And once you, 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 s you create this workflow, what we will do is that at the end of every refresh of the data, we will kick that off, we will export the data, execute the model, and bring the data back into CI. So now that we have that, we can start building measures on top of that, like a churn score uh, for a customer, right? So just by using that, or the hotel rec recommendations, services of hotel recommendations. The last type of insight that we have is segments. And, and the capabilities th that we have today are no different than any other segmentation tool that you know about, the manual segment builder that we have. The main value here is being able to create a segment that brings together data from different data sources. So imagine you can create a segment of users that uh, visited your website and also stayed in your hotel and also opened the marketing campaign all in one segment. These are signals that used to be really separated, and now you bring them together in one place. So I built a few segments based on the churn model and the, spar and the uh, recommendation model that we built. And you get, you get to see the trends, and, and you can edit them and refresh them. So we build all of these insights, right? But as I said, what do you do with them? Now you need to take action. And we'll see how, a, a, how customer insight uh, can be extended with other tools. So one of the first things that you can do is to export the segment into Dynamics. Dynamics for sales, Dynamics for marketing. We have the, cap the ability to export to, to Dynamics marketing lists. 
We are also working on other connectors, and if you have customers that are interested in new connectors to export these segments into, let us know. We are working on an Adobe connector that is coming in the next few months, and, uh, and of course, Dynamics is our first partner in this. So if you go to, um, I exported the SPA recommendation segment. These are all the users that have a, a recommendation uh, to have SPA, and then, um, and then here is my segment. I exported it to, to sales, and now the sales team can take action on, on the insights that I build, on the segment that I build. The other thing that we have with Dynamics, and uh, I'm going to just um, show you a, a screenshot of that. I apologize for that, is a contact card built into Dynamics. OK, thank you. Um, so this is Dynamics for sales. We have a pre-built connector into Customer Insights, and you can build, you can get the, the unified profile, the activities, and the latest thing that the, the, the Sales Insight uh, created is the ability to take the measures output, create an assistant card. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, uh, James mentioned some of these new capabilities, and use our own chair score in in the profile information. You can also do Power Apps and Power BI. Uh, connector, so I'll quickly show you. Uh, you can build your own Power App. So I brought the the data and and the activities for that user in Power in Power App. So again, if you don't like what we're doing, or if you want to try uh, something else, if you want to bring the data and use that in your own Power App, we we did build a connector to Power Apps. So this whole story is coming together. We are not siloed. We are building all of that, so you can take action and use that outside. OK? I'll switch back to my So we learned about customer insights, how we get a unified profile of the customers and all of their activities, enrich the data with third-party data, um, create insights, take action on them, export out to external platforms that can use these insights. Adapt and extend, use Power Apps, use Power BI, uh, use Flow. So I forgot to mention Flow. We do have a connector to Flow as well. So you can create flows like if the customer has a churn score that is above 0 0.8, then take action. And that action can be what, send them an email if you're in the marketing apps or, or contact them in any way. So we are, we are all connected to all of the Power Platform um, applications as well as the new AI builder that will be coming in the next uh, few months. I'll skip those because we already demo them. And then the last thing I want to call out is this bring together, and James talked really well about that. So data is everywhere. They, and the digital feed, and the feedback loop and everything, we build on top of that. So we get all the data, we bring it one into one place, we let you get a unified view of the customer and take action on that. And then extend that what within Dynamics and Power Apps, as well as external applications that you can build on your own uh, using the customer insights data. Find us here. We'll be a, we have a stand uh, down there, the road. You can find us, find us, send us an email, find us on LinkedIn. Uh, we are really, really uh, grateful if you could send us feedback because we are a new product. We just launched in April. We're the newest addition to the Dynamics family. And we want to hear more from our customers, hear more what you need, and then, uh, and then get you started. So the other thing that you can do is also go to our homepage and start your own trial instance. We let you start an instance, a, a trial instance for 90 days. You can bring your own data, see if that works for you. Tell us what's missing and what you need. And we're very grateful to have you here today. Thank you so much.